Hi, and welcome to Paper Root Scrapbooking. I'm Nadine, and today I'm playing along with Ginger over on Ginger's Corner, and we are turning scraps into embellishments. <laughs> So as I said, I'm playing along with Ginger over on Ginger's Corner. She is doing a year-long hop, um, and I've been participating about once a month. And we are turning our scraps into embellishments for, um, most of us are doing it for the swaps, um, some people not. So go check out the other ladies in the list below, or you can just go to the playlist over on Ginger's channel. I will link all of that below. If you want to join the swaps, please pop into Ginger's Corner Facebook group. I'll link that below as well and um, sign up. So this swap is called Rock, Paper, Scissors, and it's anything that is relevant to childhood games, vintage childhood games. So I chose dice um, and I went ahead and grabbed some black and uh, red cardstock scraps that I had laying around and I threw them through the Cricut and made some dice and then I didn't really like the way so when I put them together I didn't like that the dots were black so I decided how does this go now oh there we go so do you see what I'm saying I wanted so like I wanted the dots to be white. So I just grabbed a piece of white cardstock. Instead of like messing around with the Cricut software, I just thought I'm just going to um, back the cut file basically is what I'm aiming for here. So I'm going to just trace a line here. Oh, here's my pencil. And I'm just gonna trace around the outside edge of the dice. And then I'm gonna, and this is just from my white scraps that I had, and a pair of scissors. So I tend to keep my cardstock scraps in a accordion folder arranged by color, and then I'll also throw in there when it's like tone on tone. So if it's like a tone on tone red, it goes in the red and um, that sort of thing so that if I'm looking for a scrap I usually look by color. If the scraps are multicolored I don't tend to keep them. Once the collection is finished then I'll get rid of them with that. So that's how I do that. So I just went inside the pencil line so that hopefully when I put it in behind the dice that we have no white showing along the outside edge. There we go. So that seems to have worked out pretty good. So I am going to ink the edges of the red with some Lumberjack Plaid Distress Ink. And I'm just going to go around the outside edge. It gives just a little bit of pop to the edges of the image. Then I'm going to take my white glue, a little piece of foam on there from my applicator, and just throw some of that on there. And then we will put it on top. The beauty of using the white glue as well is that it gives you a little bit of time to like move things around but it is the one I use is quick drying so it's not a ton of time it's just usually enough to get things stuck down and this one looks like it has just a tiny bit once it's glued down of the white sticking out so I will trim it there we go and then I'm going to pop it on here aside I guess so just again with the glue and then I'm gonna center it onto the um, border of the dice and we have a cute little pair of dice 
but the cut lines are kind of faint and hard to see so I'm just going to go over them with a black pen. Where did I put that? And just make them stand out a little bit. There we go. So there we have a pair of dice. Now I was just going to show you too what I'm going to do with my scraps. I'll do the other ones off camera. Oh, I missed a step. Hang on. I also like to write my name on the back so that whoever gets my embellishment and they go to use it, they know who made it. So I like to put my name and I like to put the name of the swap, rock, paper, scissors, and the year. Okay, so there we have it. So then I was just going to show a little bit of like these scraps still have some usable paper in them. So I think I'm going to punch some stars that I can send my swap friends to go with their layout when they use the dice. And it'll be out of the same papers. So... See if I can get five out of here. There we go. And the beauty of these creative memories punches is that they already have the sizing done for you. So like when I punch the next one, I know it's going to fit inside of the previous punched one. Like the black ones that I did in the bigger size, it'll already nest in there. Another way to do this is with those nesting dies that you run through your big shot and they have all the different sizes. It's another really good one. With red, I'll often do hearts, but because this is games, I decided to go with stars. So there we go. So um, I'm just going to set those aside. And then I will, again, ink the edges of the stars. And then put the glue on the back. And set that down on there. There we go. So everybody will get a star and a dice. And I used up those red and black scraps from my stash. So I hope that um, if you are inspired by watching the videos that you'll go and check out the other ladies in the hop and check out Ginger's playlist. And if you're interested in the swaps, pop over to Ginger's Corner and join the group and sign up. You can sign up as often as you like. Every week there's a swap, um, or as rarely as you like. These are mini swaps, so you make four, send four, receive four different ones back. There's also a main swap where you do 10. Um, some people just do one or the other. Some people do both. Some people do whatever inspires them that month so you can do it there is no wrong way all right so thanks so much for hanging out with me today i hope you enjoyed this video and if you have any questions or comments please leave them down below and i'll get back to you just as soon as i can have a great day everyone bye for now